We returned to Salisbury Hall, confident in the knowledge that it had been such a long time since our first visit, our regular viewer would have forgotten all about it. What with the cost of living, we couldn't afford the petrol to travel any further afield, and Salisbury Hall, if nothing else, was free to wander about inside. Besides, on our last visit, we forgot to mention the Salisbury Witches which was enough excuse for us to repeat ourselves with all the unstoppability of a sprout souffle. So, be prepared for lots of random footage over the next couple of minutes, accompanied by narration with only tenuous links to the visuals at best. Where to begin? Well, on the 19th of August, 1612, three of the local Salisbury women, Ellen Briley, Jeanette Briley and Jane Southworth, the latter of whom had recently been widowed from John Southworth, whose father owned Salisbury Hall, but had disinherited him for not being Catholic, were accused of practising witchcraft. Funny how nobody ever seemed to master it, by the appropriately named 14-year-old with a grudge, Grace Sourbutts. The three of them were tried in Salisbury Village, which, to be honest, we'd never been able to locate, being it more difficult to pin down than Brigadoon. Among their nefarious alleged crimes were child murder and cannibalism, which adds a whole new level of experience to Salisbury Hall's kitchens when you visit. They were said to have used diverse devilish and wicked arts called witchcrafts, enchantments, charms and sorceries in and upon one Grace Sourbutts. Seriously, court cases were a bit more open-minded back then. It seems that the accused also had the ability to change themselves into dogs, a practice still common in Blackpool nightclubs, and had carried Grace to the top of a hayrick by her hair. The list of accusations goes on a bit, but we won't. Eventually, Grace Sourbutts admitted that she was lying and had been told what to say by Jane Southworth's uncle Christopher, a Jesuit priest currently hiding somewhere in Salmsbury. By which I mean currently back then and not currently currently, obviously, although whether he was ever actually found or not I couldn't honestly say. All three of the Salisbury witches were found not guilty. The case against them collapsed spectacularly, according to Thomas Potts, the clerk of the court, when Grace Sourbutts was shown by the judge to be the perjuring tool of a Catholic priest. You still get a lot of that sort of thing nowadays, usually involving choir boys. Jane Southworth's son, Thomas, being a good Protestant lad, managed to get his hands back on Salisbury Hall in the end. So, on that somewhat terse but upbeat note, we'll end this episode equally abruptly.